Item Number SCP-1985 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-1985 is contained at subsite and is to be kept in good condition and health. Ongoing research on SCP-1985-A is mandatory. If SCP-1985 is judged to become a significant security risk due to exposure to another anomalous entity, device error, or any other reason, Protocol 1985-ADON will be enacted. Protocol 1985-ADON is classified level 4 and will be automatically disseminated to all personnel involved with SCP-1985 in case of containment breach. Mobile Task Force Omicron 1985 is responsible for retrieving SCP-1985 upon its return from an excursion. Deployment of mass amnestics is pre-approved if SCP-1985's return is witnessed by multiple members of the civilian populace. SCP-1985 has been implanted with a tracking device, and is currently allowed Class I full, non-restricted free-roaming and socialization privileges with approved site personnel, granted based on continued good behavior. Per Class I protocols, SCP-1985 is not allowed to enter non-approved areas of subsite or any applicable facility, and not allowed outside its containment area without being accompanied by approved personnel, except under temporary involuntary relocation. Approved personnel may interact with SCP-1985 under protocol guidelines, and may refer to SCP-1985 by its first name. Approval of personnel for Class I interaction with SCP-1985 is currently handled by Dr. Glass. SCP-1985's containment chamber currently includes a computer with an internet connection. All data sent to an outside network by SCP-1985 is managed by monitoring personnel. See Containment Protocol r 13 During excursions, SCP-1985 is to have assigned equipment on its person at all times. All retrieved items are to be secured as soon as possible once an excursion ends. Description. SCP-1985 is a female human of African-American origin, named Jacqueline. SCP-1985-A is a trans-universal teleportation device implanted in SCP-1985's body, including millions of ultra-thin components in its brain and spinal cord, and several large components located in its thorax and abdomen. Anomalous qualities of both SCP-1985 and SCP-1985-A appear to have been based on qualities of multiple other SCP items. When SCP-1985 dies, SCP-1985-A is activated. Upon activation, SCP-1985-A transports SCP-1985 to what appears to be a parallel reality. This parallel reality will usually, approximately 95% rate, be undergoing a K-class scenario somewhat consistent with the Jackson K-Class classification system. The 5% deviation is thought to result from utilization of a slightly different K-Class classification system than in use by any currently extant Foundation branches. Tilda David Moose Meta Study on Established K-Class Scenario Systems Utilized Within Foundation Archives Eschaton An SCP Foundation Journal 2013 165 the destination reality that SCP-1985 is transported to cannot be perfectly controlled, but certain realities and types of scenarios can be targeted by priming SCP-1985. SCP-1985 is primed by exposure to materials related to the gold topic in the period shortly before initiation of an excursion. Priming Process Priming of SCP-1985 has a base success rate of approximately 70%. Priming success rate can be increased by emotionally agitating SCP-1985. Exposure to material, such as documents or audiovisual records, related to the priming target can result in a priming success rate as high as 93%. SCP-1985 may be primed to travel to a reality to which it has previously traveled. SCP-1985 will arrive in that reality significantly before or significantly after any time which it had previously spent there. Attempts to induce SCP-1985 
to enter a reality during a time frame in which it is already present, have been unsuccessful. Any items or persons that SCP-1985 is in contact with, and specifically desires to transport, are transported with it. SCP-1985 cannot transport any material except what it is wearing if unconscious for more than five minutes prior to death. SCP-1985 can simply transport objects when returning. Two-way communication is possible with SCP-1985 during an excursion. Signals may be sent and received as if all equipment was located in the same reality. Signals are apparently shielded from carrying anomalous effects. SCP-1985 arrives in the alternate reality in a random location close to the surface of Earth's crust. This location may be of any nature, whether underwater, underground, or mid-atmosphere. For this reason, and others, transportation of personnel with SCP-1985 is inadvisable. SCP-1985 is returned to life in a significantly altered physical state. In SCP-1985's altered state, it is highly resistant to all forms of physical injury, as well as many anomalous effects. It gains significantly enhanced physical ability and sensory perception. It is able to survive without food, water, and oxygen for a prolonged period of time, variant based on unknown factors. Components of SCP-1985-A extrude from its body, notably fine metallic threads covering the surface of its skin. SCP-1985-A will return SCP-1985 from its excursion once one of the following conditions are fulfilled. SCP-1985 dies. SCP-1985 does not die, but is subject to completely crippling damage, or a loss of more than 10% of its body mass. Six months have passed. SCP-1985 claims that this six-month time period is a default setting that can be altered with proper devices, and that it can stay in the destination reality for several years before running out of power. SCP-1985 is returned alive and free of physical injury in its baseline physical state. Usually, SCP-1985 will return to a random location not inimicable to survival in contrast to excursion initiation. SCP-1985 will always undergo an automatic scheduled excursion event if 30 days pass with no triggered excursions occurring. Mechanism for cause of death in this case is unclear. All its bodily functions cease to operate simultaneously. SCP-1985 claims the one-month time period may also be altered with control devices. Foundation researchers have been able to interface with SCP-1985-A. Information recovery is ongoing. Efforts to reconstruct SCP-1985-A control devices are currently underway. SCP-1985 was discovered on in Los Angeles, California, two days after it was witnessed by locals, quote, appearing out of thin air, unquote. SCP-1985 evaded the witnesses and checked itself into a local hospital. SCP-1985 expressed confusion at the delay in recovery once Foundation personnel arrived. According to SCP-1985, the Foundation implanted it with SCP-1985-A and had been sending it on regular excursions until contact was unexpectedly dropped during its last trip. SCP-1985 appears to have been designed by the Foundation in an alternate reality or under a program referred to as Project Rhodes. All anomalous traits of SCP-1985 appear to have been derived from anomalous objects contained by the Foundation. SCP-1985 was one of 37 other quote, successful unquote, products of Project Rhodes, which also produced 593 unsuccessful products, and is referred to as K-Class Scenario Research Device R-21. See SCP-1985 Recovered Information. No other successful products of Project Rhodes have yet been discovered. SCP-1985 displays the following notable physical traits. History of clinical depression, anorexia nervosa, cancer, and alcoholism. Extensive scar tissue present throughout its body both internally and externally, particularly around the spine and back of head. 
drastically slowed aging process. Pre-recovery use of amnestics has made actual age difficult to discern. Appears to be in late twenties. Possible protection from some restructuring events. Level 3 access granted. SCP-1985 has a duplicate living in. Duplicate is identical to SCP-1985, except lacking anomalous attributes. Protocol 1985-Adon Protocol 1985-Adon, also known as the Kill Switch Protocol, is the last resort protocol to be used if SCP-1985 is involved in or constitutes a serious breach. Protocol 1985-Adon, when enacted, deactivates SCP-1985 by temporarily shutting down all mental activity. There are three major downsides to Protocol 1985-Adon. SCP-1985's mental activity cannot be restored for a period of one week. This appears to be another default setting, which the Foundation does not currently have means to alter. Recovered information indicates that if SCP-1985 dies while deactivated, death will be permanent. This method was used by SCP-1985's creators to kill malfunctioning products of Project Rhodes. During previous uses of Protocol 1985-Adon, SCP-1985 incurred temporary brain damage and several times nearly incurred permanent brain death while deactivated. Excursions Individuals with appropriate clearance level may access further details of SCP-1985's excursions in Disseminated Documentation 1985-Alpha. Addendum Per request, a representative example of a lowered priming success rate is Excursion 289-0AJ-P05, in which SCP-1985 was primed with information about and agitated via references to SCP-1985's homosexuality and religious background. This resulted in SCP-1985 traveling to a reality in which a Christianity-based cult had exterminated all non-heterosexual humans via anomalous means. I've attached a file listing similar results. This is why we don't recommend agitating SCP-1985 outside of guidelines. At best, you'll end up with a lowered success rate. Doctor. Addendum. SCP-1985 has been able to access the following K-Class scenarios, following the Jackson K-Class classification system. XK-Class Type Alpha, Scorched Earth, End of the World Scenarios XK-Class Type Omega, Religious End of the World Scenarios CK-Class Restructuring Scenarios AK-Class Madness End of the World Scenarios EK-Class Consciousness Loss End of the World Scenarios NK-Class Grey Goo End of the World Scenarios RK-Class Out Competition Restructuring Scenarios SK-Class Dominant Shift Scenarios IK-Class Collapse of Global Civilization Scenarios Remainder Classified Addendum On May 19th, SCP-1985 submitted a single request for administration of Class N targeted amnestics. Request was denied. Update. Personnel with Level 4 clearance may refer to Excursion XJU-034-IQ-1 for further information on SCP-1985's nature. Excursion XJU-034-IQ-1 Priming SCP-1985's own personal origins. Success. Trigger. Standard lethal injection. Equipment. Standard. Reality description. SCP-1985 did not travel to another reality, but immediately transformed to its altered form without any teleportation occurring. Retrieval. SCP-1985 reverted to its base form after six months of study without any teleportation occurring. Notes. This is the only time SCP-1985 has been transported to the same reality it was sent from, and appears to confirm that SCP-1985 originates from this reality. Full implications are unknown. The strongest possibility is currently thought to involve a CK-class restructuring event taking place in our reality that did not affect SCP-1985. 
Regardless, the fact that SCP-1985 was able to travel to this reality at all indicates that some form of K-Class scenario is in progress here. Further information is currently classified Level 5. SCP-1985 Recovered Information Introductory Note Much of the following information regarding SCP-1985 still requires deciphering due to an unusual internal information storage and clearance system. For example, in some instances, highly classified information has been recovered, but information of lower classification has not. Information recovery is ongoing. Your current access level is Level 3. Certain information is restricted to Level 4, Level 5, or to SAP, Cantilevered Muskrat. Project Codename Rhodes Only one reference to Project Rhodes exists in current Foundation archives outside of SCP-1985 files. Further information is restricted to Level 5. Project Number PRJRDS Dash zero zero six two zero five Sub Project Identification Label K Class Scenario Research Device R twenty one Description R twenty one is currently the most successful K Class Scenario Research Device, preceded by many discarded devices and human specimens. Anomalous Artifact Construction Notes Along with a surprising amount of information extrapolated from SCP-1005's anomalous function. SCP-1005 appears to refer to SCP-201, not SCP-1005. SCP-2914 SCP-2914 appears to refer to SCP-507, not SCP-2914. R-21's transuniversal teleportation method is primarily based on extensive research on 2914. Since 2914's death, its exact anomalous attributes have been duplicated three times, unfortunately permanently psychologically destabilizing each subject. Recovered expunged data Duplication has failed in the remaining 197 experimental subjects. None of these three subjects can be considered suitable for extra-reality expeditions. Further, 2914's ability will not work at all when not implanted in a human being. It must be partially controlled and activated by a partially organic device. However, it has been impossible to replicate the higher brain functions unique to 2914, which allowed it to be affected by its ability without losing sanity. All these factors are what primarily requires a device implanted in a human subject, combined with recovered expunged data, elements of the organic brain of SCP-1313 instances. SCP-1313 does not appear to refer to SCP-1313, references so far unknown. Despite extensive experimentation, researchers have not been able to perfectly replicate the safety feature that 2914 apparently utilized during its teleportation that allowed it to arrive in areas relatively safe for human habitation. R-21 and two other road subjects display a functional safety feature that will only activate upon return, but works improperly upon initial trip, only going as far as to hinge the subject to the Earth's crust. SCP-1313 SCP-1313 does not appear to refer to SCP-1313. References so far unknown. For the neural network to function and properly target specific realities despite, or perhaps because of, biological nature. Programming must consist of a specific goal set that is simple, easily understood, and extensively documented. Naturally, this does not pose a problem. Unfortunately, it is difficult to test the protection from reality shifts derived from SCP-4879 and SCP-4777. Section does not refer to SCP-4879 or SCP-4777. Further information is restricted to Level 5. Four subjects have been wiped from existence in localized events already. 
RK-21 is in which protection seems to be fully functioning. It is unknown if this course of action could result in the triggering of another event, but it is considered doubtful. Circumstantial fallout of project aside, we feel the risks are acceptable. Disseminated Documentation 1985 Alpha This document contains a partial archive of excursions undertaken by SCP-1985. Format is as follows. Excursion Label Priming Success Failure Trigger Equipment Personnel Reality Description Logs Forthcoming If Awaiting Release Restricted If Not Retrieval Retreat items, notes. Full information may be restricted to members of Special Access Program Cantilevered Muskrat. Excursion 310-DJ4-9 LK. Priming: SCP-765. Success. Trigger: Standard lethal injection. Equipment standard. Reality description. SCP-1985 initially arrived in the core of an active volcano and expired. Excursion was repeated. Individuals associated with the Serpent's Hand had triggered an AK-class end-of-the-world scenario utilizing SCP-765, in combination with an unknown effect amplifier, after the Alternate Realities Foundation had decided to expand its size by 1,000% for unknown reasons. 90% of the world's population was afflicted with crippling lethargy, apathy, boredom, and depression, causing vast numbers to die of starvation, and sometimes dehydration, as they ceased to eat or drink respectively. SCP-1985 was unfortunately not immune to this effect, and died of starvation after several months. Logs forthcoming. Retrieval Uneventful SCP-1985 expressed intense relief at being free of SCP-765's effects. Retreat Items A canister of water from the modified SCP-765, collected before SCP-1985 succumbed to the effect. Notes, this was intended to test to see if SCP-1985 would find a reality undergoing a K-Class scenario related to the safest of safe-class SCPs. Excursion 17B-MNU-094 Priming SCP-573 Success Trigger Standard Lethal Injection Equipment Standard Reality Description SCP-573 was stolen from the Foundation by members of the Chaos Insurgency, who used it to control several million animals and children in the continental United States first using them to extract political concessions, then using them as a makeshift army, then eventually slaughtering most of them. No alteration to SCP-573 was apparently required to achieve this effect. Notably, during this excursion, SCP-1985 encountered what appeared to be an alternate version of itself, also in excursion form with similar visual traits, and completely missing both arms. This alternate version of SCP-1985 fled on site, and SCP-1985 was unable to relocate it. SCP-1985 was killed by the Chaos Insurgency after two weeks. Logs forthcoming. Retrieval uneventful. Retreat items none. Notes: It is not known if this reality's version of SCP-573 possesses the same capabilities that its alternate demonstrated during this excursion. Excursion 051-UWJ-97Y Priming SCP-1157 Success Trigger Standard Lethal Injection Equipment Standard Reality Description SK-Class Dominant Shift Scenario in which instances of SCP-1157 had become the dominant species of Earth. Baseline humans made up a significant minority with the majority of their population having been killed. Instances of SCP-1157 controlled most major countries, though humans still controlled a minority. The Foundation was still present and contained the majority of extant SCP items, 
and many SCP-1157 instances were working with the Foundation and the remnants of the Global Occult Coalition to attempt to reverse the SK-Class scenario. Additionally, not all SCP-1157 instances were identical to SCP-1157-1. Sixteen different base forms were observed, each represented by a different collective consciousness. Logs forthcoming. Retrieval uneventful. Retrieved items. Notes: Remainder of excursion details, including nature of retrieved items, are currently classified level five. Excursion 1FR-L75-03X. Priming. SCP-1004 Trigger Standard Lethal Injection Equipment Standard Reality Description Mass broadcast and distribution of SCP-1004 by associates of the factory resulted in an AK-class end-of-the-world scenario in which 94% of the global population exhibited behavior characteristic of SCP-1004's final stages. The Foundation survived in this reality, and efforts to reverse SCP-1004's effects were ongoing, though resulting in only minor success. SCP-1985 was killed within one week of arrival. Logs Restricted Retrieval Uneventful Retreat Items None Notes Request was made by Dr. Bright to investigate the possible seriousness of SCP-1004's effects. Excursion NIN-100-RC3 Priming None Trigger SCP-1985 was caught in crossfire during a chaos insurgency incursion during a move between sites, sustaining injuries to his left leg. SCP-1985 acquired a weapon and fatally shot itself. Equipment None except for inbuilt recording equipment. Reality Description Expunged data pending release. SCP-1985 was publicly tortured and killed in a group execution. Members of group included four local versions of SCP-1985's family members. Logs restricted. Retrieval uneventful. Retrieved items. Expunged data pending release. Notes: As typical after an excursion of this nature, SCP-1985 requested temporary isolation and temporary cessation of experimentation. Request granted. Excursion D4L-41N-K0M Priming Repeated exposure to SCP-3932 Success Trigger Standard lethal injection Equipment standard Reality description Following Foundation diplomatic intervention Tensions between SCP-3932 Delta nation-states became lessened. This resulted in a temporary peace accord between the nations, who then declared war on humanity. Conversion of all oceanic cetaceans into SCP-3932 Delta instances followed shortly thereafter, with full conversion occurring three months after. The SCP-3932 Delta instances then caused a partial SK-class dominant shift scenario resulting in all oceans being taken over by SCP-3932 Delta instances. The original three nation-states of SCP-3932 Delta emerged as major superpowers, but were unable to retain complete control over the world. Logs forthcoming. Retrieval SCP-1985 manifested in the water off the coast of Australia, having previously been aboard a Great Barrier Reef Empire in-exile prison vessel. Rescue dispatched from Site-72. Retreat items, none. Notes. In this reality, the Foundation has avoided any attempt to diminish the Cold War between SCP-3932 Delta nation-states out of fear of potential alliance. Excursion 5TY-H6I-GHR Priming SCP-682 and Associated Termination Log Unknown Trigger Standard lethal injection. Equipment Standard, along with a restricted level 5 stealth device. Reality Description SCP-1985 arrived in a massive stone labyrinth consisting of hallways approximately 3.5 meters wide and 12 meters tall. 
The labyrinth appeared to be carved from a single seamless type of material, with no cracks observed during the entirety of SCP-1985 excursion. The lack of any observable light source required use of a Foundation-issue flashlight. SCP-1985's exploration of this reality remained uneventful until it encountered an object possessing cognitohazardous and or unknown anomalous properties, resulting in the damage of SCP-1985's inbuilt recording and communication equipment. Remaining footage of the object was too blurry to decipher, or remained cognitohazardous, but after-action reports from SCP-1985 described the object as a stained glass window embedded into one of the walls, with light shining through it. SCP-1985 was unable to identify the image on the window due to fear of mind-altering effects from prolonged exposure. SCP-1985 was able to resist the cognito hazard, but claims it gave it the urge to… SCP-1985 describes encountering two other anomalous objects, a red organic cube protruding out of a wall and a large presumably mechanical object SCP-1985 observed moving across a hallway in the distance. After three days, SCP-1985 came across a large square room, with the only feature being an unknown object hanging three meters off the ground, and a large hole underneath it, emitting yellowish-green light and producing sawtooth beeps. Due to unknown cognitohazardous influence, SCP-1985 was unable to accurately determine the appearance of the object. SCP-1985 claimed it was either a chandelier of some type, or a board with an unknown linguistic character on it. SCP-1985 describes approaching the hole and looking down it, but is unable to remember what was down the hole and what happened afterwards. It is presumed this led to its death as SCP-1985 manifested in baseline reality around this time. Logs, forthcoming. Retrieval, uneventful. Retreat items, none. Notes. This excursion was meant to be the first in a series of excursions, with the goal of gaining knowledge of potential K-class scenarios caused by SCP-682, and to prepare countermeasures. Whether or not the observed reality has any relation to SCP-682 is currently under review. Excursion TLB-13P. Dash MM9. Priming. SCP-2186. Success. Trigger. Standard lethal injection. Equipment. Personnel. Standard. Reality Description. This reality's foundation was at a point in time in which SCP-148's deleterious properties were still unknown, and its uses were relatively common. This foundation had additionally created an altered form of beryllium bronze by reverse engineering SCP-148 and SCP-402. This metal functions similar to SCP-148, absorbing reality-altering properties instead of mind-affecting ones. The metal was used during a surgery performed on SCP-2186, lining the surfaces of the room. Despite the application of general anesthesia, SCP-2186's properties activated in the middle of the procedure, with a higher intensity than normal. Stage 1 transformation occurring after 30 seconds, followed by Stage 2 occurring after 2 minutes. The altered metal prevented the anomalous properties, which lasted 12 hours, preventing the object's retrieval before it expired, from extending beyond the room. Approximately 16 minutes after the object expired, the altered metal released the anomalous energy which resulted in the entirety of the Earth, everything therein, and the Moon to undergo Stage 2 transformation. SCP-1985 returned to baseline reality after six months of exploring the transfigured landscape. Logs, forthcoming. Retrieval, uneventful. Retreat items, material samples taken from affected landscapes, objects, and organisms. Notes. DNA analysis of 68% of retrieved samples are a direct match with SCP-2186. DNA analysis of 29% of retrieved samples have no exact genetic match to existing organisms. The result of the DNA analysis of the remaining 3% of retrieved samples is restricted, pending release. Excursion B08-FXB-N25 Priming 
SCP-1985's own personal origins. Failure. Trigger. Standard lethal injection. Equipment standard. Reality description. SCP-1985 initially arrived mid-Pacific Ocean and swam to shore. A full-scale SCP-1801 outbreak had converted the majority of life on the planet into a single, contiguous, fleshy mass. When SCP-1985 arrived, SCP-1801 had apparently adapted in order to begin converting inorganic material as well, and was in the process of doing so. A small number of SCP Foundation personnel survived, and were attempting to contain the SCP-1801 outbreak, with little success. The SCP-1801 mass attempted to convert SCP-1985 after it accidentally came into close contact with the mass, and SCP-1985 was automatically returned as normal. Logs forthcoming. Retrieval uneventful. Retrieved items none. Note: Accidental discovery of potential extra capabilities associated with SCP-1801 has been passed on as per standard procedure. Excursion XJU-034-IQ-1 Priming SCP-1985's own personal origins Success Trigger Standard lethal injection Equipment standard Reality description Log Not applicable Retrieval Retreat items Not applicable Notes Personnel with level 4 clearance may access the content of this entry. Attach the main SCP-1985 documentation here under the Update to Excursions section.